The outline is by as follows. As a first point, we have the introduction. Next, the methodology employed. Next, the results obtained. And finally, the conclusion and future work. Introduction. Currently, most of energy is obtained from fossil fuels for which thousands of tons of greenhouse gas emissions are released into the atmosphere every year, speeding up global warming. Therefore, the development and positioning on clean energy technologies play a fundamental role in changing towards and clean, sustainable, and economically viable matrix energy. Here, the polymer electrolyte fuel cell comes into play an electrochemical device that produces clean energy using hydrogen as a fuel and oxygen as an oxidant. As we can see in fiber two, the hydrogen molecules enter by the anode side, whereas the oxygen molecules enter by the cathode side. The hydrogen molecules are split into protons and electrons. The protons cross through the poly polymeric membrane, whereas the electrons are conducted by an external circuit producing electrical energy. Additionally, only water and heat are obtained as a final product. Among other advantages that can be mentioned are high energy conversion efficiency, approximately 40%. In case of use cogeneration, it can reach an efficient of 80%. And silent operation due to the lack of moving parts. Nevertheless, there are some issues to overcome for the fuel cell technology arrive on the market with stress mainly in cost reductions and optimization on the perform performance. In figure three, it can be noted as scanning electron microscope image of the membrane electrode symbol of the cell. This one is, one is a fundamental part of a polymer electrolyte field cell. The membrane electrode symbol is placed in the middle of a single cell, and it is the site where the electrochemical reactions occur. One of the most important properties related to this part is the proton conductivity in polymer membrane. In theory, this is a crucial factor for getting better performance. This present study focuses on figure out the effect produced by two independent variables that greatly impact the protein conductivity and the output power of the cell, such as the temperature and the operating high current density. At the end of the presentation, we will have answered the question, does high protein conductivity values imply greater output power, considering the mentioned variables? Let's continue. Second part, methodology. To develop the study was used a field cell test system, which permit data collection in real time. In figure four, we can see the internal structure of the test system, where figure five is show the single fuel cell use. The test system comprises volumetric flow controls, heating elements for anode cathode cell with their corresponding temperature meter, variable DC log and frequency response analyzer. The collected data are automatically saved in a computer through the fuel cell software. The main parameters set were a temperature range between 40 degrees Celsius to 90 degrees Celsius and a fixed curing density of 2 amperes per square centimeter, which correspond to the maximum applied load of the system, that is 50 amperes. After configuring the experimental parameters, the electrochemical impedance spectroscopy test was applied to obtain volumic resistance. And with the help to the equivalent circuits for modeling and obtain better results. After that, with the values of volumic resistance, was proceed, was proceeded to calculate the proton conductivity using the equation one show below, where L is the membrane thickness, R is the ohmic resistance, and A is the effective area of the membrane. On the other hand, the power output of the cell 
was obtained by automatically a measure by the system. Well, as a third point, we have the result. Effect on the temperature in the proton conductivity at high current density. The results are shown in figure six. It can be noted how the proton conductivity of the polymeric membrane has an increasing trend, showing that the proton conductivity is directly proportional to the change in temperature. Also, for temperature greater than 80 Celsius degree, the proton conductivity points are slightly separated from the strain line. This fact can be attributed to the type of the polymeric material. Based on previous studies, has a maximum working temperature of 80 Celsius degree. After that point, the protein conductivity can be scattered or decreased in value. Also, the polymeric membrane's performance depends on the water vapor context during the energy conversion process. Due to this, at low temperatures, the protein conductivity increase, whereas at high temperatures increase. To compute protein conductivity, empirical correlation were proposed in table two. F correlation presented with the respect error square that explain how the band variable describes the independent variable. Further, normalized root mean square deviation is also added. It is an indicator of the percentage of error associated with the proposed prediction model. The polynomial one correlation predicts in the best manner with an R square of 0 0.997 and a normalized root mean square deviation of 1.76%. The values obtained from this correlation are shown as a continuous curve plotted with the experimental data in figure five. Furthermore, this correlation can be used in future semi-empirical models. As a second part, we have the result. Uh, the effect produced by the temperature on the output power of the fuel cell operating at high current density. In figure seven, show the output power as a function of the temperature. As we can see, for a temperature range between 40 to 75 Celsius degree, the output power increase. After that, the output power start decreasing. If proof evidence that high protein conductivity doesn't necessarily mean higher output power. There are other factors that can affect the performance of a PVC as the electrochemical platinum surface area, which is a measure of hydrogen absorption, desorption in catalyst layer. Also, water management within the polymer electrolyte fuel set must be carefully considered. The maximum power obtained was 25.4 watts. It obtained up 75 degrees Celsius with a conductivity of 73 milli siemens per centimeter. Finally, in table two show some possible correlation to predict the power output as a function of the temperature. The best fit model was the exponential with an error square of 0.99 and a normalized root mean square dissipation of 1.27%. Lastly, to finish, uh, we have the conclusion. Based on the results, it was found that the protein conductivity is directly proportional to the increment of the temperature with a linear trend. The results show that a high protein conductivity doesn't necessarily lead a high PVC performance. After 75 Celsius degree, the conductivity increased, but not the polymeric light fuel cell power output. Based on the exponential trend found in the power temperature graph, it was evident that there is a maximum, power, maximum performance point for the polymeric light fuel cell around 75 degrees Celsius, where the maximum power output was 25.4 watts. Finally, 
The empirical correlation obtained have an excellent fit to the experimental data with a R square of 0.997 for the protein conductivity and 0.999 for the polymeric drive fuel cell forward output. Well, as a future work, we have two uh, research lines for the future. First, applying linear sweep voltammetry to quantify the hydrogen permeability of the different polymeric membrane as a function of the independent variable that affect the, their performance. Second, applying circular sweep voltammetry to calculate the electrochemical surface area of different catalyst layers to evaluate the electrochemical performance. Well, this is all for today. Thank you for your attention. Uh, if you have any question, I attend for this.